Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. For today's video, we're gonna be talking all about breastfeeding. The tips I have, tricks I have, products I love, just info I can give you after it's been 10 months now of breastfeeding my daughter. I occasionally will give her a bottle. I think she's probably had less than 10 in her life and that has just been if I need to go somewhere, my husband or a grandma, a grandpa, whatever can give her a bottle, but pretty much exclusively she has been breastfeeding for 10 months now and I thought that this would be the perfect video for my channel to just kind of give you all the information that I've learned over the past 10 months that I wish I knew, things that I found really helpful, or just info that I would like to know if I could go back in time. So. I'm gonna kind of separate this video. I have notes on my phone, so if you see me referencing, I wanna try and keep this as kind of concise and organized as possible so it's really, really helpful for you to reference. So before I get started with anything, I just do wanna say, whether you choose to breastfeed or formula feed or pump and feed out of bottles, or if you can breastfeed or cannot breastfeed, whatever happens for your journey is totally Fine, as long as your baby is being fed. I want to emphasize that before we get started. Not everybody wants to breastfeed. Not everybody is able to breastfeed. I've been really, really fortunate to have a really wonderful, successful breastfeeding journey with my daughter, but I know that's not the case for everyone. So don't put too much pressure on yourself. Just make sure your baby is getting fed whatever way works for you and your baby. I do also wanna just preface, I have had a very smooth and successful breastfeeding journey with my daughter. We've been really, really lucky. Not everybody's journey is going to just be super easy, so I'm not gonna come on here and just say, oh yeah, you're just gonna breastfeed, it's natural, it's awesome, and it's gonna be great and easy. For me, after a little bit of a rough spot, it's been amazing, but of course, everybody's journey is different, so don't compare yourself to anybody's journey. Everything is totally different based on you, your body, your baby, everything. But this is just my experience and I wanna share it with you guys. The first thing that I wanna cover is what to expect. What's gonna happen with breastfeeding? Cause when I got pregnant, I had no idea anything about breastfeeding. So I'm gonna kinda of just tell you guys as if I were me and telling you everything I would wanna know. So the first thing that's gonna happen, sometimes when you're pregnant, you'll leak, sometimes you won't. I really didn't leak at all whatsoever. But then once you give birth, and both are totally normal, I just wanna say that. Once you give birth, first colostrum will come in, which is basically the stuff before your milk. It's kind of what they call like the golden milk. It's super dense and yellow and thick and full of nutrients. And that's what just immediately comes in when you're giving birth. Your baby will start with that right when you give birth they'll want you to feed right away if you are wanting to breastfeed and that stuff is liquid gold it is so full of just like bacteria fighting sickness fighting it's amazing stuff it's everything your little baby needs right away before your milk comes in it can be really intimidating because i remember i was sitting in the hospital and they wanted me to feed my daughter and i was like there is nothing in my boobs nothing is coming out and they were like yes there is there is stuff in there you can feed her and i would push my boob and i'm like look nothing's coming out but there's a technique to expressing milk so you have to like start at the top and press all the way through your boob and like to get it out you can't just like go like this and think milk is going to come out so little things like that i remember i panicked because i was like there's nothing in my boobs for me to give her and they're like yes there is go like this and then stuff would come out so i just want to encourage you there are a lot of learning curves to this journey and that's okay so that's just one little thing the colostrum comes in first and then it typically takes four to five days depending on if it's your first baby how your body works whatever it may be it's different for everyone i think it took my body five days for my milk to come in and this is a process <laughs> basically you're gonna wake up and you're gonna feel your boobs be full and hard and when the milk lets down it feels kind of like tingly and it's like kind of painful but very muted painful it's more just like a tingle like you can just feel that something's going on and then your boobs are probably going to get very hard and very large because your milk is filling up your boobs. So basically you're going to want to feed your baby to get that milk supply up. You're going to want to pump if you need to, to release some of that pressure. You can hand express, manual express, 
electric pump express there are many many ways to express milk one thing i did want to touch on though and this is not going to be the case for everyone but for me it took five days for my milk to come in and this was probably the hardest point of our breastfeeding journey and the hardest one of the hardest moments for me as a mom my daughter was starving and i thought my body's just gonna make exactly what she needs i'm gonna have enough colostrum for her she's gonna be full like this is how the human body works i'm gonna have everything she needs till my milk comes in well i didn't i did not have enough colostrum she was crying her head off starving i could hear her stomach growling and there's literally nothing worse as a mom than knowing your baby is hungry and you can't feed them or knowing your baby needs something and you can't give it to them i just sobbed i sobbed my eyes out i facetimed my sister-in-law who was pregnant at the same exact time as me i was sobbing to her i'm like she's screaming she's so hungry i cannot give her enough there's not enough coming out i even tried pumping to see if i was getting anything and there were just like drops like it was not enough to feed her and she was like rachel if you need to give her a couple bottles of formula till your milk comes in it's fine and so my husband ran to the store he got his formula I, we made her a little bottle and she chugged that bottle so quickly she was so hungry and then she was the happiest baby in the world. Her stomach wasn't growling. We only had to give her two bottles of formula and then my milk came in. And then I had plenty for my daughter. But I just want to tell you guys that if something happens where your supply dips or your milk hasn't come in and you're not making enough, whatever it may be, if your latch isn't working out and your baby isn't getting enough, it's okay to supplement. Whatever you feel comfortable with, as long as your baby is getting what they need, that's all that matters. I had a really hard time just with feeling like I wasn't giving my baby what she needed. So I was okay with giving her formula. I just wanted her fed. I just, it didn't even enter my mind because I was breastfeeding. I didn't even think, oh, let's just give her a bottle of formula till my milk comes in. So thank God for support system, my family, my sister-in-law to tell me like, that's okay just give her some of that and then when your milk comes in you're good so i just want to tell you guys that because that was a very intense low point i'm this new mom second day having my baby she's crying her head off and she was starving i gave her a bottle and she was perfect so i just want to say it's a journey and things aren't always going to go perfect there's ebbs and flows of breastfeeding and that's okay so now that i've kind of covered what to expect with milk coming in and things like that I want to touch on tools and products that I love. So a couple of these are going to be pumps because pumping does typically come into play when you are breastfeeding. Not everybody chooses to pump, but I did. So I was really engorged. I had so much milk right off the bat and it's painful. Your boobs get hard. And one question I got on my Instagram is what can you do to avoid mastitis, which is basically clogged milk ducts, super painful. It becomes like an infected, an infection in your boob. You get fever. You feel like you have the flu. It's a really painful, horrible thing to get, but it's very common. I was really lucky not to ever get clogged ducts, never had mastitis. Um, and a few things that really help with that is expressing milk, keeping the milk flowing, making sure that it's not just storing up in your boobs because that's when you're, um, ducks can get clogged so obviously nursing your baby and then pumping can come into play too so there's a couple pumps i really like i like this medela manual pump because you just stick it on your boob and go like this it's really really easy to put together there's not a lot of parts and just go like this and just express enough that you feel comfortable but not over express where that tells your body to make more milk this is where pumping is kind of tricky especially at the very beginning um basically what my doctor told me at the very beginning up until three months your body just makes a ton of milk it's not like a um it's a hormonal thing it's n it's just gonna do it it's not like if i miss this feed now my supply is down it's just gonna make milk so the one thing that does impact it though is if you express more milk feed your baby more pump more your body's going to make more milk so she told me 
you if you're already engorged you're already so full of milk you don't want to then go and pump 10 ounces because then your body's gonna think oh i need to make more of that because she just expressed and used up all that milk so basically what my doctor said is you need to find this fine line between relieving yourself and over pumping which is then just going to make more milk which is just going to make you more uncomfortable and it's this cycle you can see what can happen so basically what she told me is when you're feeling really full and you're feeling engorged and uncomfortable just pump enough milk to feel comfortable again and then stop don't drain your boobs empty because what i was doing is i would have such a full full boobs and i would just pump them till they were empty and then i'd be like huh but then my body would think I used up all that milk and it needed to make more again. So basically just pumping till you're comfortable again and leaving it at that to kind of regulate your milk supply, help your body understand how much milk you need and stay comfortable. The other pump that I really like, I keep in this little bag. I use this still. It's just the Spectra pump. Um, it's an electric pump. I use this. I use this a lot um, at the beginning, the first few months of my daughter's life because I did want to build up a freezer stash just to make sure I always had milk for my daughter. I had milk if other people wanted to feed her. It's totally up to you what you want to do. But I really like this pump. It's covered by insurance and it's super, super easy to use. One thing I wanted to note is I didn't know how to use a pump my sister-in-law showed me how to put it together how it works so I'm just gonna really quick tell you the settings of this pump I'm not gonna show you everything about putting it together because there's tons of YouTube videos of that but what you're supposed to do with an electric pump is you press on and then it has two settings it has the stimulation part which is like short little pulses to get your let down which is when the milk actually flows into your boobs you do that for like two minutes to kind of stimulate everything and get the milk to let down and then you switch to the actual like suction expression um function on here and that's what's going to be more slow intense like suction and that's what's gonna actually like really pull out the milk so there's two separate settings you can also this vacuum one you can go up and down based on your like level of comfort and what you're desiring for suction level but i just want to say that you start with the stimulation where it's just kind of like a quick little pulse and then you go to the more intense suction along with pumps and all of those types of things you're going to want either nursing bras nursing tank tops or bralettes things that are easy to pull up so i feel like there are kind of two types of apparel preferences for breastfeeding it's either where you want to unclip and just take your boob out that way or just pull up and have your baby get access that way so i have a few favorite pumping pumping and nursing bras sometimes they're two in ones or just one or the other i'll link them below i have a more affordable option from target that i really love and then i have a more high-end one from kindred bravely that i really love so i'll link the nursing bras that i really like but if you're not really into nursing bras you can just get like nice bralettes something without an underwire that you can pull up something can still be padded but just easy to pull up is great for nursing so those are kind of my tips for either one or the other you need easy access to your boob especially in those first months when they're nursing all the time you're going to want easy access the last kind of tool i want to mention is a breastfeeding support pillow this is my favorite one this is the boppy breastfeeding pillow i've tried the my breast friend breastfeeding pillow i've tried the boppy breastfeeding pillow i love this one i think it's way 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 more user friendly way more comfortable way more functional i've touched on this in a few of my videos but i like this one because you can stick the whole pillow in the wash you can stick just the cover in the wash it's really comfy to just set around you like this and then set your baby across and they can feed that way you can use this as a support pillow for them when they get a little older and are trying to sit there's just a lot of uses for this and this was probably my most used item ever for the first I just want to say like literally probably six months of her life we don't use a support pillow like this anymore i just grab any old pillow and stick her on there because she's too big for a all-around pillow like this now but this was so essential if i ever left my pillow when i was gonna need to feed my daughter i was like 
like this was everything to me i recommend this so much it's so comfy it's so easy it's support it's just so nice um so this is what i would recommend whatever one feels really comfy to you there's a few on the market but this is my favorite one and i highly recommend getting a waterproof cover i did that it's not on there right now but um the waterproof cover is really great sorry I have a little bit of a weird lighting because the sun is starting to set i'm trying to get through this before it does i would recommend though having some type of support because it makes breastfeeding so much easier when you're trying to figure out they're so tiny and fragile and need like a hundred percent of your support when they're new babies so having a pillow to prop them up and kind of just like make you feel really secure is awesome i remember in the hospital when i first was trying to feed my daughter trying to like hold her neck and hold her body and like hold my boob and everything was really difficult for me and i would get really stressed out every time i had to do it in the hospital but once i had this pillow where i could just lay her here and my boob was right there and i could just support her like this i could use this hand for my boob it was game changing. So if you're having a hard time positioning your baby, a support pillow is awesome. Okay, I'm gonna move these shades and see if we can't get a little bit better lighting. Okay, it's a little darker now, but I'll just turn up lighting here. Okay, hopefully that's okay. I'm trying to do this quick before the sun completely sets. So the next thing I wanna cover is just kind of the actual feeding process, what goes into an actual nursing session. Typically what the doctors will tell you is when you bring your baby home, you wanna feed them every two hours um, until they hit their birth weight and then you kind of do every two to three hours. That's kind of the rule of thumb, but of course every baby's different every journey is different and as they get older timings will switch on how much they eat how much they need to eat that all changes but I followed the rule of thumb of every two hours I would feed my daughter and I think it's very important to note because I had to ask this in the hospital because I didn't know every two hours is from the beginning of the feed so if I fed my daughter I started feeding her at 10 o'clock a.m. the next time I would go to feed her would be 12. So it's not, okay, she takes 20 minutes to eat now at 1220. Like it's from the beginning. So it really feels like you're feeding them every hour and a half at the beginning when they take a long time to feed. It, your baby is gonna start out trying to learn how to eat. They haven't done it before, so they're gonna take a lot longer. I remember my daughter would take like 40 minutes to eat now I can feed her in five minutes. She's 10 months old, she knows what's going on and it does get easier and it does get more efficient. So just hang in there. It does feel like you're basically feeding your baby around the clock because you kind of are. But once they get the hang of how to swallow and how to express the milk better and just how to do it, it's going to, be, it's going to become a lot more efficient and you're not gonna be nursing your baby for 40 minutes at a time. It gets better and easier. I did want to also say there are cluster feeding times, which is when your baby basically wants to eat all the time. It could be every 10 minutes, every 30 minutes, every 45 minutes. It's your baby wants to eat constantly and that's to up your supply. It's really cool to me how the female body works and basically when your baby wants to cluster feed, they're trying to up your supply. So they're trying to feed constantly so it tells your body more milk, more milk, make more milk. This baby needs more milk. So if you are gonna hit these times where your baby wants to feed so often and it's very, very common at the beginning. So those sessions are really hard. Your boobs are going through it, but they do pass. So that's also super normal. If your nipples are struggling, nipple balm is amazing. I really, really was lucky and didn't had, have to use things like that soothing balms very much right at the first week. I did just because my daughter was nursing for so long, so often. I will link below some of the nipple balms that I really like, but take care of your nipples. This is kind of a trauma for them. They're going through, you know, a lot of wear and tear that they didn't before. It's a really sensitive area, so you can just slather some of that on. I would feed my daughter put it on right after so it had time to soak in before her next feeding session and i just got organic um, nipple balm so i felt comfortable if she did get some of it when she was eating but i would always just slather it on after a feeding session so that it would soak in by the next one but you do 
got to take care of your body and it is a little bit difficult at the beginning just your nipples are getting used to it uh, but then it does pass and they're fine i was really lucky i've heard horror stories about how painful it was for people and i really didn't experience that thankfully it was just like a little bit of soreness but everybody's different something else that's really important is the latch of your baby the latch is basically how they are suctioning onto your boob a few things to look for is making sure that your baby's lips are kind of pursed out like this you don't want it to look like they're curled around you want to make sure it looks like they're flared out and you don't want to hear any like <coughs> you don't want to hear that kind of stuff because that means they have a shallow latch or they're not latched well so they're coming on and off and getting a lot of air and they're not going to have very much milk there are a lot of things that you can either hear from a lactation consultant or look up online it's really easy to find like signs that your latch is not good or signs that you have a good deep latch i looked into that a lot because i was really concerned with making sure it was good but my main um kind of giveaway of if the latch is good or not is if it's painful it's probably not a good latch it shouldn't be painful and what i mean by that is yes at the beginning of your breastfeeding journey your nipples are sore so there's going to be some tenderness but it shouldn't hurt for your baby to nurse and that's why I'm really lucky. My daughter has had a, an amazing latch right away. I could literally just like plop her and she would go. And not everybody has that experience. A lot of times babies will come on and off and on and off and on and off and it's really hard. I'm super lucky. My friend even came over to see her once. She was like two months old. And I was like, do you mind if I just feed her here in front of you? She's like, I don't care. So I just like went like this. She goes, oh my gosh, did she literally just lock or like latch already? So I have it really easy where she just right on. And another thing you want to listen for is that you hear them swallowing without a bunch of like, because that means air is coming in. They're detaching and retaching. So just making sure you have a good deep latch is so crucial for your baby and for your comfortability. If your boobs hurt, reevaluate the latch and if you need help reach out to a lactation consultant i owe my success in breastfeeding to my sister-in-law i was panicking because i felt like i didn't know how to feed my baby it's hard if you've never done it i felt so awkward trying to figure out how to hold her how to get her on all these things and i like I asked my sister and mom, like, can you just help me? And she's like, do you want me to just go in there and literally take your boob and like show you how to do this? And I'm like, yes. She's like, okay. So we went in to the nursery, boobs out, find, find someone in your life <laughs> that you feel comfortable with that can help you because it was life changing with our breastfeeding journey. She literally took my boob and she sand, you sandwich your boob. So you don't just like go up to your baby like this. You want to sandwich your boob so it's flat so they can get on there really quick and she basically shoved her onto my boob and she latched she's like don't be shy about like trying to get her on just plop that push that baby's mouth right there and they will <laughs> like that's the way to get her on there and it worked so well she also really helped me find a position that worked for me because i was like well the doctor told me i should hold her like this like a football but that didn't feel comfortable for either of us she's like try laying her on her side holding your boob like this and pushing her onto it that's how I fed my baby for 10 months. I would put this on, I would lay her on her side, I would hold my boob with one hand, hold her here, and it was so comfortable, so natural feeling. So find a position that works for you. There are so many different ones you can try. People, a lot of people like sit their baby up and hold them. Sometimes they do the football where they're laying back here and their head's right here. Side is what works for us and what we've done for 10 months and it's it was just what was natural and what was the best for us. So find a position that works for you. Find a support system that can help answer your questions. I was so confident in feeding my daughter after my sister-in-law just showed me how to do it. Because in the hospital, you can get help, but sometimes it's not the most helpful unless you get an actual lactation consultant. So having someone be like, do you want me to just show you how to do this? And I was like, yes. And it was like I could have tears of relief because I finally felt confident in how to feed my daughter. So I can't stress enough to ask for help if you need it. It can be intimidating. It can feel weird. But honestly, this is about you and your baby and your baby getting the food that they need and the 
having a experience that is comfortable and enjoyable for both of you and it was just life-changing to have a support in my sister-in-law to show me how to do it and to help me <laughs> i know this video is getting really really long but i wanted to be super thorough because there is a lot that goes into breastfeeding so i have just a couple other things i wanted to mention before i wrap up this video there are allergies and things to look out for. Um, I know that a few people, I've heard their babies had blood in their poop, which doesn't always mean allergies. That can mean a lot of things. Of course, consult your medical doctor anytime something is concerning. But if your baby is getting hives or rash all over or blood in their poop or vomiting, there are definitely times that babies can be allergic to the lactose. If you're having dairy or gluten or nuts, there are things that babies can be allergic to through the breast milk. And so if your baby is vomiting profusely or has blood in their stool or is covered in hives, these are just things to look out for that your baby may have a sensitivity or an alert an allergy to something that you're consuming so that's just something to look out for and consult your doctor with if you do notice anything like that just little tips that i have is when you are breastfeeding i feel like a lot of times i mean it is totally dependent on what each person is comfortable with in regards to like public feeding what they're comfortable showing some people take their entire boob out and don't care some people want a full cover it's totally just up to you for me i like to be covered unless i'm around like people that i'm really comfortable with so like my husband my best friends my family i don't mind just feeding my daughter and they can see but if i'm like at a gathering or at friends i typically go into another room or I like to be covered. So I found that the easiest way to breastfeed if you want to be covered is actually not to use like a blanket draped across or a cover. Those cover things are so hard to use in my opinion because you got your pillow, at least for me. I was not like a, let me just hold my baby and feed her and cover. It was too hard. I would put my pillow and I would try to like, and I'd have to support her and like move her to each side. It was too hard. Literally, just put your shirt that is that is the easiest thing i have ever done with feeding my daughter in public plop your baby on the boob and just put your shirt over it life-changing you can cover your whole boob with that thing and you do not need a cover that gets in the way of everything all right i got just a couple more things i feel like this is so long and i'm really sorry but i hope it's helpful at the three month mark your supply changes so don't be alarmed it goes from just like hormonal milk production to supply and demand so if you have a drop in your milk supply at three months that's really normal um of course everyone's different i always want to say that as a disclaimer and things can affect your milk supply but at three months it your milk supply changes the way it actually is being produced basically instead of just making milk if your baby nurses your body knows you need to make that milk if you stop nursing completely your milk supply is going to drop so it's dependent on supply and demand this is a lot of times when people will start pumping so that they do up their supply keep it up have extra whatever you want to do but at three months it does change and a lot of people see a little bit of a dip which is totally normal baby is more efficient sucking out milk than a pump is so if I, this is something i didn't know but if you are wondering about your milk supply and you pump and you only get three ounces but you're like i know my baby drinks like five or six ounces Babies are more efficient at expressing milk than pumps are, so it's not always a completely accurate representation of what your body is producing based on what you pump. I didn't know that, but I found that really interesting. I wanted to share that with you guys. And then the last thing I wanted to say is if you are experiencing a milk supply drop, you can do a few things to help with that because supply will drop throughout times over if you're changing up your exercise or if you cut out an ingredient that your baby might be allergic to and it's a big diet shift or if you're not getting enough calories or if you're really really stressed or if your baby is not eating as well or the latch is not as good there are so many reasons that your supply will ebb and flow i've been really really lucky to have an awesome supply but i have had a few times where i was like 
I can tell that my supply is not as good or I would feed her and normally when I would finish feeding my boob would still feel like it had some milk and then there were times where I'm like there's nothing left like she is sucking the last drop and I could tell that it was a little low. In order to keep your supply up, you wanna make sure you're eating enough calories. I think I read that you have to at least eat, what is it, eight, 1800 calories to make milk at all. I think that's what it is. I'll put it in if I'm mistaken what the actual calorie count is. But you have to be getting enough calories and I know it can be hard postpartum like, your body's all different and you might be worried about how the weight or whatever don't worry about that just worry about getting enough calories you have to have enough calories in your diet to make milk at all so if you're not eating enough your supply can drop same with water you need to drink enough water in order to have your supply stay up milk is a lot of water and if you don't give your body water it's hard to keep a milk supply up um, there are a few other things that can help like I tried some lactation bars I'll link below and i'll put a little picture of what they are those i actually saw some really good results i felt like my supply was back to normal after eating those things that can help are getting your vitamins getting enough food getting enough water but there are like lactation things that can help and pumping more can up your supply nursing more can up your supply uh, but don't get down on yourself if it goes through ebbs and flows breastfeeding is a journey and your baby will feed really good then not so good your milk supply could be off the charts and then dip a little it's all part of the journey and there's a lot that goes into it so that is everything i'm sorry that was such an in-depth video i hope i covered everything if i missed anything just leave it in a comment if you have any questions or any advice for anyone else um, that's really helpful and i can answer anything in the comments if i forgot anything but i hope that this video was helpful and don't get down on yourself i do want to say if you're having a hard time breastfeeding or breastfeeding isn't right for you or you're having a great breastfeeding experience i'm really lucky to have such an amazing experience but i know that's not the reality for everyone and it's okay this is a journey and things will ebb and flow there will be highs and lows and as long as your baby's getting fed and as long as you're healthy and they are healthy that's what matters um i have a really really strong love for breastfeeding and i'm really thankful that i've gotten to breastfeed i feel really connected to my daughter i love it i have a really intense emotional connection to breastfeeding my daughter and i'm really thankful that we're still able to do it and i'm thankful that she is a good eater and it's gone really well for us but if you are having any trouble reach out and get some help there are so many resources so that's everything i hope that you guys liked this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel i would love to have you guys here and really appreciate you guys watching if you are not following my instagram you can follow me at rachel freebie underscore i would love to have you there as well thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you in my next video bye